So the first stop on the learning train is going to be the sparse solver. And sparse solver is good at simulating stuff that's not just like one big blob, but stuff that's happening all over the place. So we're going to make a particle sim to shoot smoke trails in random directions. And that means that we're going to need a particle sim. So drop a geometry node down, call it the sim, jump in. Now obviously there's a particle series for Applied Houdini. Even the first lesson is free and would tell you more than you need to know with regards to how much we're going to do particles here. Uh, so I'm going to try not to dwell on particles too much. Um, I am going to go through it quickly. So just make a sphere to be our source. We're going to shoot particles out of the, like in the normal direction of the sphere. Um, let's do a clip. We don't want to shoot them down. The clip is centered at the origin, conveniently. So we're just going to have this hemisphere here. Um, I increased the frequency on it also to 8, just so it's smoother. Um, we could also make it just a lot smaller. I just want this to be, again, just a little source to shoot particles out of. Nothing too crazy. Now you'll know, perhaps, from the particle series, or not, make a pop network. It's really just a dot network. Dynamics operators. The same thing that Pyro uses, the same thing that Rigids use. Back in the day, pops used to be their own area particle operators. Now they just live in dynamics. So by default, this is using the first context geometry, which is this first input here. So by default, if we space G to look at it, we can see particles showing up on the surface. They have no velocity, so they just sit there. Um, let's say we don't want this many. If you go to the birth, it's making 5,000 of them per second. We want two of them per second, I think. That seems much more reasonable. So now, if we turn the guide off, you can see we're just making a few. And my computer is so incredibly fast that it can handle a particle, to a 10 particle sim, even faster than 24 frames a second. So that's why it's playing through these 120 frames so fast. So, if your computer is also so powerful that you can handle 10 particles, click on this clock. The clock will force the computer to slow down to 24 frames per second, just so we can get a better idea of what this is going to look like. So come back out here. We need these to shoot up into the sky and come back down again. So we need to do a few things. Let's actually do gravity first. We need the, the come back down again. And while we're thinking about coming back down again, let's do a ground plane to collide with. So ground plane, merge into the gravity thing here, oh, like so. The merge by default is a collision where the left affects the right, so the ground plane affects the particles. I'm going to turn the display off on it. And the particles themselves are just kind of stuck here now. Let's shoot them into the sky. So go back to the attributes that we were starting to do and say let's set the velocity. Let's shoot it up. So the initial velocity is, then the y direction is 10, plus or minus 1. So we can see, like that, they're coming up and they're coming down again. Let's make it go up higher. Cool. Let's make it go wider. So we'll have the variance, because remember this is the plus or minus. So we want it to be up to 10 in the x direction or minus 10. So now we got something like that. Let's have it, let's give it some depth in the z direction, not too much, because uh, I want to keep the, the actual simulation kind of scrunched together in that plane, if possible, this plane, I mean. That'll save us some simulation time and such. So that's not bad, um, and then we'll just vary out, uh, vary up the, literally the up direction. So it's 15 plus or minus five and so on. So there we go. Um, we also don't want them to live forever. So uh, live forever. So go to life expectancy, say you will live two seconds, not two frames, but two seconds, plus or minus one second. So of course that is one to three seconds. That will be randomly assigned. And we will use that later on too, because these are going to be where the, our smoke is sourced from. 
We're gonna use that later to say, how far along are you into your life expectancy? Like, what is your age now, divided by the maximum life? That's how far along you are. We'll use that to drive the size of the emission and we'll have it taper off. Cool. So that's going well. Back out here, um, we need to not, right now we're importing the ground plane in addition to the particles because the ground plane, rather if you look down here, middle click and hold, ground plane is a dynamics object as in the whole pop object that stores all the points in it is one too. And this is saying get everything. So I'm just gonna put stop, uh, star pop star, which means get me all objects that have pop in the name. It's only this one. I'm just, I could literally just type pop, pop object out, but I'd rather be lazy and just type star pop star and then invest all that time I saved in explaining endlessly why I did that. So there you go. We now have these points. And last thing we're gonna do here is we'll make a Wrangler. That's right, we're gonna use some Wranglers, we're gonna use some Vex in this lesson, just a little bit, don't worry. So I'm gonna make an attribute called density um, because it's just an at without anything in front of it. It's just a float, meaning it's just a decimal number, a regular old number, make it 1.0, that's it. We're gonna use that attribute to convert that into smoke in a minute, or a volume, I should just say. And let's finish off this chapter with a null that just says, these are the points. We hold them. Very good.